G'day folks and welcome back to my channel. Alex does the least educational bushcrafting channel on all of YouTube. So thank you for coming along for another journey, another two days, or today will be today and you know how it goes, next week will be another day. We like to split it up and spread it out thin. <laughs> I just like to give you guys a bit of regular content every week because um, sometimes, you know, it might be a week between my visits, but it might be three weeks or a month between my visit um, or maybe not a month. And I just want to keep that regularity going. So something you can depend on, like a pair of pants for people with leaky bladders. Now that's, I don't know, I sh maybe I should have pre-thought of an analogy. Anyway, so we're back. Welcome back to the bush. Welcome back to the shelter. How good does it look with all this uh, thatching? I was going to say thatching. It's not thatching, is it? It's wattling. All the wattling done kind of really, it really encloses it in. Looks like a real hut. Absolutely loving it. I can't wait to actually uh, get some mud on there and see what that starts to look like. Ooh, we might have a play around with that tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? The fireplace is looking good. It's still standing, which is the main thing. A lot of cracking on the front, again, as is expected. Maybe a little bit more than I thought, but certainly it feels very solid. And at some point, we'll come back and uh, spacko over it all and fill those cracks in the mud. So today, though, I want to focus on trying to figure out what I'm going to do to fill the hole in the smoker. So that is going to require me to come up with some sort of wood door thing and that's, you know, kind of flattish and the right size. And then once I've got that there, I can then fill the gap in with some clay or some mud. Um, I did bring a fro with me today. I'm not going to be making any shingles. I did buy this for making shingles. This is just a cheap generic one that I got off Amazon. And uh, this one's about a third of the price of a Gransforth Brook um, fro. So I decided to opt for this as a tester in the beginning. So for those that don't know, this is a fro. It's kind of I was going to say a sideways axe, but you don't actually hit with it. So the idea with a fro is you, you take a section of log or whatever piece of wood that you want to split along the grain and you basically hold that along the top of the grain or your round of wood or buck of wood or whatever, a, a, a round of log, and then you, you hit the top of this to get it to start splitting and then you can lever it with the handle to try and split that off. Now the downside and my main concern at this stage is that every time that I've seen these used online with the small amount of research that I've done, they have been using it on green wood, which I don't have available to me. As you will know, if you're a long time watcher of this channel, I can't go chopping down trees because I don't technically own them. Uh, and not only do I not own them, a very large, powerful and rich corporation does own them. And uh, I do not want to get on their wrong side if they were to see some of this footage of me cutting down trees and the world we live in today where people like to dob on other people for doing things trivial or otherwise. Uh, yeah, the last thing I want to do is to be reported for doing anything wrong. But now, I, you know, I don't want to go and cut down living trees anyway. So yeah, I'm looking at only accessing stuff that's already on the ground. There's how old they've been on the ground. Obviously it varies and I have no real way of telling. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, it's not particularly sharp and I had also read that they don't need to be very sharp. I had planned to just take a file to this to sharpen it up anyway, but I can, I'm lazy. <laughs> What can I say? So we'll see how this goes. But anyway, I, I brought this along not not to make uh, oh my friend is back. Hang on, I've got to get him some food. Hold on. Not last camp, but the camp before, as I was packing up, I'd had some macadamia nuts and I threw them out on the ground, and he turned up and um, ate them and then left. And then when I came here last time within 10 minutes of me being here he turned up again and i didn't have anything for him and um i'm, I'm assuming raw unroasted unsalted nuts are probably okay for him so this time for myself i brought some walnuts and almonds and uh, i'm hoping that over time 
if I feed him every time I turn up, if he turns up every time I turn up, that we might be able to form a bit of a bond. Who knows? Um, highly recommend, uh, there's a documentary I saw recently on, I think it's on Netflix, called My Octopus Teacher. Go and watch that. Guy forms a relationship with an octopus in the sea. That's pretty cool. But anyway, um, we might have the same situation with this bird. We should give him a name. Anyway, cool little fella. We should give him a name and hopefully over time he becomes, we become kind of like friends. That'd be cool. I, I don't know how I feel about giving him stuff that isn't particularly native to his normal diet. It's, um, it's you know, because I am very cautious of causing him any dietary concerns. But anyway, moving on, I digress. Where was I? I don't know. We're going to use the fro. We're going to try and make a door for the fireplace today. We're going to get cracking. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's a new shirt. Again, no endorsement or anything. I paid full price for this shirt, but I'm such a fanboy of Alton Goods, I thought uh, they brought out a shirt. And um, so I thought I would get it. Here we go. I'll show you what the back looks like. <laughs> so there you go. I thought maybe I had, uh, maybe while I'm here, I should do some sort of Instagram modeling pics of the shirt and uh, maybe it'll score me some sort of sponsorship from the guys. Um, so if you want to see my, if my, uh, my, my attempt at Instagram modeling photos, you want to see a bit of skin, <laughs> head over to my uh, Instagram page, Alex does no expert. Links in the description below. Anyway, I'm gonna crack, eat some on my nuts before I give them all to the bird. Too cool. Rightio, so my first attempt at uh, finding a suitable bit of wood to uh, to make for a door on the smoking hatch is this piece down here. This is a bit that I've slowly been working away, cutting pieces off to uh, burn. But um, the termites have been in this and you can see they've taken away, maybe, I think anyway, some softer layers. And I'm just, I'm wondering if this section here, maybe if I can carve it down or if it'll separate and make a curved door. It's almost long enough, so um, certainly with all the termite damage in there, it'll make it easier to carve the core out. Um, I don't think there'll be a need to necessarily use the fro, but you never know. Um, I need at least so much, probably to here, so I'm going to cut it back. To about here and we'll see if we can get something out of that anyway so as as always it's always just a matter of trial and error I'll, I'll cut this and look if it doesn't work it's only going to go in the fire anyway so um, I've got the I've got the saw ready to go so I'm gonna start uh, sawing into that and uh, see what happens all right so that bit's a lot more solid than I was expecting. It's not going to work on that it's just as i expected i think it's just too it's too seasoned i could probably i think the other thing too is you need to avoid any knots or where branches have come out and i think that's what this is here and see where it dips down short of carving this one which is why i brought this this axe instead of the newer one because i figured it's a bit lighter yeah, that's fairly rotten down there, isn't it? That's what I was really hoping for, that the termites would have done a lot of my work for me. So, I think I'll put this aside. I'm going to go for another hunt around. I think there are some 
some other, um, I think there are some other wood types around that do actually split a lot nicer. It's just um, not many of them are this size, and I really need this size to start off with. So this might end up being firewood. Still, I'm happy to just try these things out. It's not really getting it wrong. It's just, it's just again, it's all part of the learning process. Shingle. Almost. <laughs> Almost a shingle. Well, it seems I found the limit to my axe. Bugger. Might need to do a field fix. Just like I bought one. <laughs> right. Now the question of course is, do I keep hammering on this or do I play smart? And uh, you know, I'm not real good at being smart, am I? Yeah, use this wood, he said. It splits easy, he said. I may end up just having this bite the bullet and shape it but with the axe after all. This is one of these times where I'm starting to tell myself there's got to be a way I can work smarter rather than harder. Of course then I start arguing with myself am I smarter and what it takes to work harder. And then I tell myself, that makes no f***ing sense. <laughs> Do you ever get stuck into a project and you realise at some point this isn't the best way to be doing things. There's got to be simpler, easier and better options. But you've just invested too much time and energy and effort into it at that point that you don't want to turn back. You don't want to start over. <laughs> Even though you probably think, if I did, it's probably smarter and quicker. Look, and I'm a massive advocate for being able to say that you've made a mistake, admit to your mistakes, learn from them, move on. And it's not to say this won't happen yet, but I'm just saying, <laughs> these things happen. And you do invest a lot of time into something. And uh, you think, you know what, I'm not giving up on it now. I'm bloody determined. So I'm not ready to quit on it yet. <laughs>
which is probably a good thing. So what I need to do now is go and mix myself up a bucket of clay. I don't need much. I'm not going to be putting any rocks in. So what I'll do is I'll put it all the way along, up the sides, around here, and then while it's wet, the idea then is to get the wood and sit it in there and push it back like so, so that it forms a shape that kind of seals. It's not going to sit, and it, it's not going to seal like a rubber gasket, obviously, or anything like that. So I'm expecting there's going to be some in ingress, 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 ingress. Well, it's going to leak a little bit of smoke. Our egress. It's going to egress. That sounds stupid. It's going to leak some smoke out through the cracks, but not as much as it was previously. So I'll go and mix up a bucket of clay and come back and we'll try and uh, put some clay around there. Once that's done, that's, uh, that's it for today. I'm going to get a fire going and I'm going to start on cooking. I've got, oh, it's going to be a very basic meal today, just steak and salad. But I'm thinking I'm actually going to smoke the steak instead of doing this, the usual grill. Pretty happy with that though. Well, there we go. That's that uh, wet layer of clay around there. Unfortunately, it didn't want to stick to the mantelpiece the way I would have liked, which is probably not surprising. So I'm going to have to stick with these three sides for now. And at some point later, I may end up putting clay somehow along the top. We'll see how it goes, because obviously it's going to leak out of there. Um, it seems to, obviously it's sealed actually really well around these three sides, but of course I'm yet to pull this out. And we don't know what that's going to be like. I certainly want to pull it out while it's wet. Um, plus we're going to, I want to cook my steak in there today. So I may end up also maybe drilling a couple of holes in here and putting a couple of studs in just to use as handles. Because it's, uh, it's going to be quite awkward I think to get it in and out. Let's see how we go. Yeah, it's gonna wants to pull a lot of the clay with it. It looks like, not surprisingly. Maybe I should have uh, put a bit more of a bevel on the wood, certainly on this side. There we go. Really what I was looking for is this lip along the bottom, which is fine. Obviously the clay, I think, shrinks too as it dries. That's why you get all the cracking. Plus the wood, as I mentioned earlier, is going to shrink a little as it dries too. So it's going to become an easier fit. Let's go for broke and try putting it back in. And then I've got to take it back out and then we'll get a, a fire going. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be too much of a drama. I think that's going to work just fine. We'll see how we go. Like I said, I'm expecting some smoke leakage, but not as much as there was without it there. So I'm going to pull this out now. I'm going to get a fire going. This will all start drying throughout the night. And uh, I'll put this back once I've got my steak in there smoking away. I've just lit the fire. So the fire's at, at that stage where it's at its smokiest. I'll put the uh, door back in and... Where it's not sealed you can say see, see there's just a slight whisper of smoke coming out of there at the moment it's all predominantly pumping out up the top there which i think you can probably see as well which is exactly what we want so as i said before i'm going to go fairly simple with dinner tonight but i am going to enjoy this steak tonight so i've got just a fairly simple but fairly nice looking nice and thick scotch fillet steak there for tonight and what i'm going to do with it this time i'm just going to simply salt and pepper it what i'm going to do i'm going to put it on the grill and then i'm going to set the grill on the smoking rack to get some salt and pepper on there first and then we'll go and put it in there and then what it what i'll do it'll just smoke and take up some of that flavor in a lower heat uh, for about probably I, I don't know i'm pulling this out of my backside so who knows but maybe half an hour an hour 
um, and then I'll make the salad to go with it and then I might finish the steak off just searing it in a fry pan. I meant to bring some butter. I always forget something. And uh, I might just pan sear it just to give it a bit of colour. So just plain salt and pepper and plenty of it. Rightio. So we'll stick that on the grill which isn't all that clean from last time. <laughs> we'll stick that on there and I'm going to go and stick this on the smoker. Hey, well, there's your indication that the door is working. Look at that, eh? You can't stick that in there. <laughs> Bloody hell, it's like a professional kitchen, eh? So I found a temporary solution, or it might end up being the permanent solution, to uh, sealing the top of this. I'm just using a uh, strip of stringy bark. Shove that in there, and that, for the most part, blocks out most of the rest of the smoke that's coming out. Okay, do you ever walk past those sort of uh, steak specialising restaurants, ranch type restaurants that specialise in big juicy steaks, and you walk past and you just get a waft of the best smelling steak smell you've ever smelt? That is exactly what that smells like. Holy cow, it smells so good. I think I might have slightly overdone it, but uh, looks nice and juicy. So while that rests, I will prepare a salad. It's fairly basic salad. Um, uh, cos lettuce, red onion, you can see avocado, feta. I've got some sun-dried tomatoes. I've got uh, olives, and I've just got some... Uh, dressing that I made at home which is uh, extra virgin olive oil, balsamic vinegar and lemon juice, you know, just the basic salad dressing. Alright, there you go. The steak was touch overdone but still very, very tender and very smoky flavoured, it's delicious. So I'm going to kick back and enjoy this and I'll get back to you once it's done. Mmm, <laughs> yum. It's delicious. I have. Well, that was absolutely amazing. Absolutely the delicious. The steak was, oh, it's overdone. There's a little bit of pink in the middle. But uh, there's, there's a ring there from the smoke. So it was actually not bad. Of course, I'm having to... Uh, share the steak with our new friend who's up there come back for another piece let's see if we can tempt him with this piece this is where he got it from last time so we'll leave it there see if he comes back and gets it nope gone <laughs> so it definitely seems as though we've made new friends so we're definitely going to have to give him a name put something in the comment what you think we should call him fireplace is working so well Really, really happy with uh, how that's turned out today. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here and uh, let you go. Thank you very much for your time and coming along today. I hope you enjoyed the video content. Um, it's nice to see that we've got a new friend coming into camp. So yeah, thanks for coming along. If you're not already subscribed to the channel and you like this sort of content, of course, you don't have to, but please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell for notification to get notifications of when new videos are uploaded, which is typically every 8am Saturday morning. So I will see you next Saturday, 8am on Alex Does. My name is Alex. See you later. Bye-bye. So yes, you were introduced last week's episode to my new friend. Actually, he's on the ground just a few metres behind you at the moment. I discovered last night that he's not the only new visitor to the campsite. We have another one uh, who's decided to make home in within the boundaries of the shelter, actually within one of the ground rails of the shelter. And this one is of an eight-legged variety and he is one, or she, is one that is not welcome. Uh, so yeah, there's a funnel web hole in there.